Curry, Mr. Bejeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Um, first of all, first couple of things. The initial cost of these things can be financed, right? And there are heavy initial upfront costs, right? But you're typically, if you're Frank and Mary, you're not taking them out of your pocket or out of your $400,000. You're basically taking them out of the mortgage. Uh, and my suggestion in these cases, use them as a line of credit. So you get a reverse mortgage for a very large amount of money, but you don't pull the money out, right? You just use it as a line of credit. You pull out the money that you need, in this case, to fix up your house, and you leave the rest in there. So uh, reverse mortgages are based on three factors. Uh, the age of the youngest borrower. Um, the youngest borrow can, borrower cannot be younger than 62 in order to get a reverse mortgage. Uh, the lesser of the appraised value of the house or the national or the maximum lending limit. So in this case, the house is worth $400,000. Even if it were worth a million, however, uh, this calculation would be based on a house that was worth $625,000. That's the maximum, that's the national lending limit. And the current interest rate. To give you an example, Frank and Mary's case. Their house was worth $400,000, and they were 70 years old. They would be, in, they would be eligible, the youngest one was 70, they'd be eligible for a reverse mortgage of $245,000, right? That amount actually grows over time, but I won't go into that, it's too complicated. Their cost of getting that reverse mortgage would be about uh, $8,000 in upfront points in an origination fees and in closing costs, the attorney's fees, et cetera. So all in, all in the, your, your, your closing costs are probably, your total is going to be about $16,000 to get this reverse mortgage for two forty-five. If Frank and Mary went through that big list of all those home improvements and decided that all the home improvements together were going to cost $40,000, they, if they borrowed that $40,000 together with the upfront cost, that would leave them with about a remaining line of credit of about a hundred and, um, or excuse me, uh, a, a, a remaining line of credit of about, uh, yeah, $189,000. Um, so what they would do is they'd pull that money out, and the only amount that would be, or the only interest that would be getting paid every month or accumulating every month would be the interest on the money they pulled out, on the $40,000 plus those $16,000 in upfront costs. So, so the, the, the amount that was, that was outstanding would not grow by a substantial amount. They'd have the rest of it available if they needed it. Now, if you're just doing home improvements in order to help somebody with disabilities stay in the house, you're also eligible for this, the home loan, the home modification loan program. Uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts will lend you up to $30,000, and effectively they're giving you a reverse mortgage. They'll give you up to $30,000 um, to do those kinds of improvements. Uh, they'll give it to you if you have income that is no higher than 200% of the HUD median. What is that? There it is, for a family of two, the HUD median income, 100% of median income is $75,000 a year. 200% is $151,000 a year. You know a lot of people who are over 70 who are making $151,000 a year, right? So like everybody qualifies for these mortgages and if you're making less than $70,000 a year, you qualify for a 0% interest, deferred loan, no monthly payments, the loan gets repaid when the house is sold or when you die. So for Frank and Mary, who are looking to not dip into their cash, and, and they just want to do improvements in order to allow Mary to stay at home, this may be an ideal program for them. Uh, the program here is administered by something called the South Middlesex Opportunity Council through a local entity. I can't remember the name of the local entity. The, fo the folks who sometimes help people with mass health applications. Remember the name? Oh. Vineyard Healthcare Access? Not Vineyard Healthcare Access. There's, there is an entity. I'll find it. We'll see if we can put it on the show when we do this. But the point is it's available. Most people aren't aware of this. And by the way, if you have a reverse mortgage or another first mortgage on your house, you can still get this. They'll take a, they'll take a second mortgage position in order to do this deal. Um, so, finally, if you're Frank and Mary, and Mary's getting these early, early stages of dementia and you are worried, oh my God, as Mary's um, situation progresses and we need, find ourselves needing to qualify for MassHealth, 
Aren't we going to be in big trouble? Shouldn't we have done all of this planning? Shouldn't we have given away all of our assets? As we have discussed before, the answer to that, if you're Frank and Mary, is no. Because if Mary's situation declines and she needs a lot more care at home and needs to qualify for something called the Frail Elder Waiver through Mass Health, while she can't have more than, than $2,000 in countable assets, uh, yes, while she can't have more than $2,000 in countable assets, Frank can have unlimited assets. So they don't have to set up, they don't have to prepare for this ahead of time. It, at the point at which Mary needs a lot more care at home, and the, and the decision as to how much care she needs is determined by Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands. At that point, all she has to do is simply shift all of her assets to Frank, and she can immediately qualify the, for the program. There is, an, there is an income limit above which you pay a copay on that, but it's high, it's $2,164 per month. Remember in our example, Mary, and this is not uncommon among, the, uh, among folks, women of this age who had re, who retired and hadn't worked a lot, um, Mary is only making $750 a month, so she'd be entitled to Mass Health will pay for as many hours of home care as Elder Services determines that she needs. And she can simply shift all of her assets to Frank. If she ends up needing nursing home care, same thing. She can shift all of her assets to Frank, and Frank can own the home. It's an exempt asset. He can have up to $117,240 in cash or cash equivalents, and he can also have infinite income. So in that situation, Frank could simply take all of his asset, all of his money above $117,240, buy an annuity, as long as the annuity calls for monthly payments over a term that's shorter than his life expectancy, that's going to be a legitimate conversion to income and all the assets will be safe. So the point is, as far as Frank and Mary are concerned, if, if Mary is getting early stages of dementia, they don't have to fall apart you know, and think, oh my God, or they don't, and they don't have to give all of their money away and feel like they've impoverished themselves. The only things they should do, and I, we've talked about this before, is they should change their wills. Frank's and Mary's wills should say, if I die, everything is going to go in trust for my wife. That way, if we shift all the assets to Frank and Frank then dies, and all the assets go in trust, Mary's kids can be the trustees or one of the kids can be the trustees. And, and, and Mary could at that point, after Frank's death, immediately qualify for Mass Health, or if she's already on it, she can stay on it. The other thing they should do, as we've talked, as was mentioned earlier, is get a power of attorney. Both Frank and Mary should have somebody who can sign things on their behalf. So if they are incapacitated, they can get documents signed. The, this, they don't need to do the kind, this kind of early asset shifting. They can wait until they find that they really need it. Um, Summary, Alzi the first thing you do in Mary's situation, call the Alzheimer's Association. Then call Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands. You will be amazed at the resources that are available. Look at your house. If you really want to stay at home, make sure that it's safe. If you don't want to pay for those repairs out of your pocket, look at the reverse mortgage options, right? Or if it's small, just look to do this thing that where the state will give you zero interest, a zero interest loan for the rest of your life. Think about whether you need to do some asset planning. The, main, the goal of all of this is to sleep well at night. So if this doesn't make any difference to you, then that's okay. If it does, then you owe it to yourself to do a little planning and plan ahead for all of this. If, you've got, if you want to see this again, this and all of, our, all of the presentations here and the other presentations I do in other parts of the state, are available on Frank and Mary's YouTube channel, Elder Law and Frank and Mary. Thank you very much. Any questions for me or for any of our panelists? They're all willing to stay after for a few minutes as long as we can make the boat. Sandy's staying. We're going to see if the waves are actually going over the side of the boat at this point. Yes, sir? Those don't mind water. Sandy, any other uh, medications that could cause problems over the any other medications that can cause these kinds of uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's problems. there's a whole list of them, and I'd be happy to have a, um, a a chat with you on the phone or in person. There's a whole list of them, and you know some of the benzos like lorazepam and those kinds of things um, that a lot of our elders are on. Some of the antidepressants um, we're needing to shift them to other ones um, because some of those antidepressants are kind of getting in the way. So we've seen some um, really good stuff with moving some medications around, making a big change. Any other questions? By the way, you should know. You know, it's like you know when you live in a place, you don't realize how special it is until you know other people come. So, so I come to the island, and I know a lot of geriatric care managers. She's probably about the best there is in the state. 
she, I, I make her come off island to do presentations with me. We did it to, I think, two statewide organizations this year. It's really, it's, she really knows a lot of stuff. So that's an ad. Uh, and any other, any other questions? If not, can I have a round of applause for my wonderful, my wonderful guests? Thank you very much. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving, a wonderful holiday. We'll see you in 2015. Thank you.